The Saints were hurt by a very controversial blindside block call. We haven't touched on that oh yet. Oh, my God. Let's and Now, the rule is a misnomer because it isn't always a blindside block that gets you penalized for a blindside block. And I remember when they passed the rule in 2019, and Sean Payton was on the competition committee at the time, there was a preseason game involving the Lions, and there was a blindside block called, and everyone was like, what are you talking about? Because we expect it to be a block – that involves a defender who doesn't see it coming. Let's hear from Sean Hines Payton talking that about Bengals linebacker. Exactly. Yeah. It was uh, Keith Rivers yeah. broke his jaw. L- let's hear from Sean yeah. Payton talking about the explanation or lack thereof that he Please. got for what was a key moment in the game that, that may have may have you. been the moment that swung the fortunes for the Saints. I'm not real familiar with that type of uh, block on that situation. It's unfamiliar. And that, that he's, you know, he doesn't want to get fined. There's the hit to the left of Taysom Hill. And, you know, it's, it, here's the, here's the rule. It's a foul if a player initiates a block when his path is toward or parallel to his own end line and he makes forcible contact to his opponent with his helmet, forearm, or shoulder. So, you know, the, he, he was moving parallel or toward his own end line, but he's trying to set a pocket. That's where the blindside block rule falls apart. He's trying to set a pocket when he does that. And it's just unfortunate that there was no explanation of it last night. They got Mike Pereira available. I don't know why they didn't put Pereira on the screen to let him explain whether it was or wasn't technically a violation of the rule. It's a bad rule. It's a bad rule. The way it's written, it's a bad rule because it's not about a blindside block. It's not about where the defender is. It's about where the blocker is. But then NFL officiating, which was churning out little clips on Twitter last night, didn't have anything to say about it. This is, gets back to one of the, the themes of the season, the lack of transparency when it comes to these controversial calls because people want to know what's going on. I got a text from somebody who's been intimately connected to the NFL for years. So this is the kind of crap that makes me think the fix is in. I know the fix isn't in, but this is the kind of crap that makes me think that they're out to get the Saints. Yeah, well... I don't know if they're out to get the Saints, but, you know, that would take an awful lot of fixing. But uh, I just will say this. When I saw that, I was incredulous. Absolutely, totally, 100% incredulous. Because the rule is, is on the books to protect a defenseless player who basically can't see what's coming. That's why this rule is on the books. And... There, it was clear that that he saw exactly what was coming, and it was just it, it, it wasn't even it wasn't a clip. If if you want to, if you want to, maybe you could call helmet to helmet, but it's very minor, very minor helmet to helmet. And look, you know, I I'll, I'll keep coming back to this. It reminds me of so many calls this year. I believe that officials right now have such a hair trigger, uh, you know, ethos because they know that they are being looked at from so many angles. The replay official upstairs, Walt Anderson and his crew uh, in Manhattan watching every play of every game, micro analyzing. They know that they are under the most intense microscope that an official officials have ever been under. And so if they see something that they think might be that call, they're going to throw the flag. It is exactly like the play. The saints got jobbed on with the hit to the helmet of Ryan Tannehill by Caden Ellis a couple of weeks ago, where the umpire Barry Anderson is standing right there watch I, I mean i hope we have the the the, the, the end zone view uh, i don't know if we do here he is, now watch he look to the larry is barry anderson there's nobody in the way he is watching it from four yards away and he called that roughing the passer and he said there was helmet to helmet contact neither of which it was and it prevented an interception and i believe 
I believe that definitely had a huge impact on who won that game. But be that as it may, I think these officials are so hair trigger right now that they're calling stuff that maybe they really don't see. And from that end zone angle, you can see Barry Anderson start to tug on the flag that he keeps in his belt like he's thinking about it. I hope he didn't wait to see the outcome of the play. Like if it was just incomplete, was he not going to throw it? If it was caught for a touchdown, was he not going to throw it? But because it was picked off by the Saints, was that the grain of rice that tipped the scale in favor of him pulling the flag out and throwing it on the ground? Because that was, as Sims has coined it, and we have used multiple times since then, nothing the passer, not roughing the passer. But fundamentally, here's the problem, Peter. Instead of studying these calls in a group setting and having accountability and explanation and consistency and repetition, all these officials fly home and they take care of what? Their other jobs, their primary jobs, the things they do 12 months out of the year, not five months out of the year. That's why the NFL has got to carve off some of the great mamu and make all of these folks full-time officials and have them in meetings Video, in person, wherever, whenever, studying film and ensuring that everyone understands what is and what isn't a foul so they can have that training the same way that it is for the players and the coaches. The training, the repetition, the discussion, the experience, that is what bubbles up in those key moments and guides whether or not the flag comes out or doesn't. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.